Thanks for coming on a beautiful sunny Sunday <laughs> evening. Uh, play is called The Plays of Our Ives. David Ives is a prophetic playwright. He, I didn't say pathetic, I said prophetic. A uh, very amazing playwright that writes some very absurd but meaningful plays. And Group 58 has done an incredible job to get us to where we are this weekend. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here. And then <laughs> I do ask that everybody turn off their phones, not just put it on silent or think that you've got it on vibrate, that alarm that you set six months ago will inevitably go off right at the most pertinent moment during the show. So just take a time to turn them off. Enjoy an hour of theater. Release from the world that we've been living in for the last little while. I do want to acknowledge that we are on Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh land, and we honor that, and we also honor the healing that we hope will have happening in Canada and across our country, even below the border. Uh, I just want to say it's been a pleasure. We've had some exceptional help from Skaru, Tristan, and Riley, and the folks that have helped us out along the way to make this happen. And a lot of extra effort was made by the people that are in the group. So I just want to say thanks to all of that. And thanks to the people that are out in the internets doing their thing and watching the show right now. Take the time to turn your cell phones off, too, and uh, maybe just Take some time to laugh a little. Enjoy the show, have a great hour, and we'll talk to you after the show. Okay, so what do you got? Me? Yeah. Have you hit anything? Let's hear it. Baby drove a bit, bit, bit. Inglewark carcinoma. That's the word I got. I like the big pictures. Yeah, kind of automatic. Oh, no. It was seeming like I need some punching up. You can always throw in a few jokes later on. Just gotta get the through line first. But do you think it's happening? I don't know, so maybe I'm just a chimp. They could have given us a clue or something. Yeah, or a story conference. But that could be the whole purpose of the experiment. I know, I know, I know. Three monkeys diving to infinity, but sooner they could produce Hamlet. Right, completely by chance. Dr. David Rosenbaum from that book is going to prove it. Sort of publish on here, with a twist. But what do we owe this Rosenbaum? A guy stands outside those bars and tells people, that one's Milton, that one's Swift, and that one's just get a laugh. What's a Kafka anyway? Why am I a Kafka? Search me. What's a Kafka? All his four friends sure think of the stitch. And how are we supposed to read Hamlet? We don't even know what it is. Okay, okay, so the chances are a little slim. Yeah, and this one guy that's supposed to be smart, this one guy at Columbia University. The way I figure it is a providence that oversees our pain in rough draft and How about you, Milton? What have you got? <sighs> Let's see. 
a man's first disobedience. And the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal taste brought death into the earth. Hey, that's good. It's got rhythm. It really sings. Yeah? What does it change to? Who cares? It's got a real voice there. Does Dr. Rosemont care about voice? Does he care about individual creativity? Let's look at this from Rosemont's perspective for a moment. No, you bring this in here to produce coffee. You know, all he wants is a clean draft of somebody else's stuff. We're getting peanuts here. It could be somebody's hat. Riding some monk scam anyway, Swifty. Well, happy me mad. <laughs> Why not just buckle down and get the project over with? Set up a schedule for yourself. Type for a couple of hours in the morning while you're fresh and take a break. Let the old juices flow. Do a couple more hours in the afternoon. Tie them shot at the fire and some masturbation. What's the big deal? If Mr. Rosenbaum wasn't worth anything, he'd be working on word processors, not the antiques. He's like a good binder and type is good. And then he treats us like a misfits at the Bronx Zoo. I mean, a tire swing? What does he take us for? I like the tire swing. It was a very nice touch. I can't work under these conditions. The one I'm producing garbage. How does the rest of yours go melting? What this? Yeah, lead us some more. <sighs> blah, 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 blah. Those mortal tastes grow death into the blimey cake. Bed sucks. Not worst? Tinkerbell. What do you think? Glamagab is good. Well, I don't know. What's the matter? Is it the time? I knew this was kind of stretching. I'm just not sure it has the same expressive intensity and lyricism as the first part. Well, I'm sure I need some rewriting. What does it? It's a rough draft. Lights up! This bit. Are they watching? What? Are they watching? I don't know. I can't see it. Got my paws over my eyes. What? What is the point of this? Why do they videotape our battle movements? What? Lights off. How are you doing, Franz? What have you got? Well, ahem, ahem. K, 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 I don't understand what I'm doing here in the first place. I'm not a writer. I'm a monkey. I'm supposed to be swinging on branches and digging up ants, not sitting under fluorescent lights ten hours a day. Sure is a long way home in the gardens of sweet Africa. Where lawns and level downs and flocks grazing the tender herb of sweet interposer. Paradise, wasn't it? Lost. 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 I'm trying to work through some of that missing piece here. It's also pretty close to home. Just because they keep us locked up, they think they're more powerful than we are. They are more powerful than we are. Just because they control the means of production, they think they can suppress the workers. Things are how they are, what are you gonna do? Hey, how can you so God and ready to just fight the ways of Rose among the apes? Do you have a key to that door? No. Do you have an independent food source? No. So call me a collaborator, and I happen to be a professional. If Rosenbaum wants Hamlet, I'll give it a shot. Just don't forget, we're not astrophysicists. We're not brain surgeons, we're chimps. And for apes in captivity, this is not a bad gig. <laughs> <laughs> What's really frightening is that we stick around this cage long enough, we're going to evolve into Rosenbaum. <laughs> evolve into Rosenbaum? Brush up your darling, baby. We're more than kin in a second time. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs>
Galloway's too. My friend. They should have thrown in a Cuban dog by that performance. Got results, didn't it? Sure. You do your bonds or routine and get a Galloway's out of it. Last week, I told the typewriter I get a whole carton of Marlboros. Problem was, you didn't smoke and you took a crap on them. It was a little bit of a statement. Hey, you made your statement, I got my smoke. All is well that ends well, right? It's the only way we know they're paying attention. Huh? We perform, we break typewriters, we type another page. And a cigarette appears. At least it's a sign that somebody's out there paying attention. Our resident philosopher. But what will happen if one of us does right hand? Here we are, set up to prove the inadvertent virtues of randomness and to produce something that we wouldn't even recognize if it passed right through our hands. But what if one of us actually does it? Will we really be released? Will they give us the key to the city in a ticker tape parade? Or will they move us on to your disease? <laughs>
Yes, it is. Excuse me, huh? Is this chair taken? Excuse me? Is this taken? No, but I'm expecting somebody in a minute. Oh, thanks anyway. Sure thing. Excuse me? Is this chair taken? No, but I'm expecting somebody very shortly. Would you mind if I sit here until he or she or it comes? You do seem to be pretty late. You never know. He might be turning down. Sorry. Nice try, though. Which you won't do very well. After which 
chill and go to the bathroom and pee very loudly. Then pad into the kitchen and get yourself a beer from the refrigerator without asking me whether I'd like anything. Then proceed to lie back down beside me and confess that you've got a girlfriend named Stephanie who's away to medical school in Belgium for a year and you've been involved with her off and on in what you'll call a very intricate relationship for about seven years. None of which interests me, mister! Do you come in here a lot? Every other day, I think. I come in here quite a lot, and I don't remember seeing you. I guess we must be on different schedules. Miss Connections. Yes, different times, always. Amazing how you can live right next door to somebody in this town and never even know it. I know. City life. It's crazy. We probably pass each other on the street every day, right in front of this place. Probably. Yeah. Well. The waiters here sure seem to be in some different time zone. <laughs> I can't seem to locate one anywhere. Wait up! So what do you do? I beg pardon? Nothing. Sorry. I guess we must have different schedules. Misconnections. Yes, different time zones. Amazing how you can live right next door to somebody in this town and never even know it. I know. City life. It's crazy. You weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? Actually, I was. Oh, boyfriend? Sort of. What's the sort of boyfriend? My husband. Uh-huh. <laughs> you weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? Actually, I was. Oh, boyfriend? Sort of. What's the sort of boyfriend? We were meeting here to break up. Mm -hmm. What's the sort of boyfriend? My lover. Here she comes right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> you weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a... Sad occupation for Friday night, isn't it? Reading here, all by yourself? Do you think so? Well, sure. I mean, what's a, a good looking woman like you doing out alone on a Friday night? Trying to stay away from lines like that. No, listen. You were waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a, a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here, all by yourself? Yes, it is, in a way. What's a, a good looking woman like you doing out alone? Friday night. No, no offense. But... I'm out alone on a Friday night for the first time in a long time. Mm. You see, I just ended a relationship. Mm. Rather long standing. I'm sorry. Well, listen, since reading by yourself is such a sad occupation for a Friday night, would you like to go elsewhere? No. Do something else? No, thanks. I was headed out to the movies in a little while anyway. I don't think so. Big chance to let Falconer catch his breath. All those long <laughs> sentences. Do you get them pretty? I appreciate the invitation. Okay. Thanks anyway. Sure thing. You weren't waiting for somebody when I came in, were you? No, just reading. Sort of a, a sad occupation for a Friday night, isn't it? Reading here all by yourself? I like to think of it as existentially romantic. You know, cappuccino, great literature, rainy night. That only works in Paris. We could help the late plane to Paris, get on a Concorde, find us a cafe. I'm a little short on plane fare tonight. <sighs> Darn it, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth, I was headed to the movies after I finished the section. Would you like to come along since you can't locate a waiter? Sounds like a very nice offer, but... Uh-huh. Girlfriend? Two, actually. One of them's pregnant, and Stephanie... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a girlfriend. Not if you mean that cash rating bitch I bumped last night. <laughs> girlfriend? Sort of. Sort of. What's a sort of girlfriend? My mother? <laughs> <laughs> I just ended a relationship, actually. Oh? Of rather long standing. I'm sorry to hear that. This is my first night out alone in a long time, and I feel a little bit at sea to tell you the truth. So you didn't stop to talk because you're moody or you got some weird political affiliation? <laughs> Straight down the ticket, Republican! Straight down the ticket, Democrat! Can I tell you something about politics? I like to think of myself as a citizen of the universe. I'm unaffiliated. What are beliefs? So am I. I vote my beliefs. Labels are not important. Labels are not important. <laughs> exactly. Take me, for example. I mean, what does it matter if I had a two-point tap? A three-point tie, a four-point tie, college, or if I did come from Pittsburgh, or Cleveland, or Westchester County. Sure. I believe a man is what he is. A person is what he is. A person is what they 
are. I think so too. So what if I buy trust? <laughs> so what if I once had a total body liposuction? So what if I don't have a penis? So what if I once spent a year in the Peace Corps? I was acting on my convictions. Sure. You can't just hang a sign on a person. Absolutely. I bet you're a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> Those early ones kind of get on my nerves. Oh, no. You know what? So I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say I was headed to the movies in a little while. And so was I. The Woody Allen Festival? Just up the street. Do you like the early ones? I think anyone that doesn't ought to be run off the planet. How many times have you seen the Eight times. A Twelve. So are you still interested? I went on a two in the morning to get one. Did you have an Etch-a-Sketch as a child? Yes. Do you like Brussels sprouts? No, I think they're disgusting. They are disgusting.
Stay tuned for more of the torture machine. We could watch the torture machine. I don't get me such a headache. You call it a headache. Doctors call it stress. And Billy called and said we bombed the high road. Is that true? To find out what? News at 7 on 7. Maybe there's something on the news. Click. Come to the land of the coconut. Click. Doctors call it stress. Try some line. You should try this stuff, honey. What is it? We've got great movies on tonight. We read this great movie on tonight. Great TV guide. TV guide can tell us. Let's see. Why don't we want to cry? Raymond, I'm your mother. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> your mother. <laughs> Did you call your mother today? <laughs> My mother called me today. Raymond, you are in high school. It's like I'm still in high school or something. <laughs> Do not track or turn your television off. We are in control. Click. If there's no news about Cairo, I'm going to change. The news from Cairo. Here's Cairo, honey. Oh my god. Did we do that to Cairo? We'll have more news from Cairo as reports come in. So did we bomb them? Stay tuned. Come to the land of the coconut. They didn't say what happened. Let's keep checking. Click. Try some along. How's the headache? We are going out tonight, aren't we? Why not sit home and try Domino's Pizza? Domino's Strange Club is on tonight. Why don't we sit home? We can sign up for pizza. Domino's Pizza! Maybe Domino's Pizza. And you relax. I just have had hard set on dancing. Captain, the Venudians have disabled the chasm meter. You want to dance? We'll get to the stock market in a second. Uh, but first... This Indiana teacher has been arrested for having sex with 25 male students and a Scottish Terrier named Fargus. A Scottish Terrier? That's right, a Scottish Terrier. Rob? Incredible. It is incredible. Rob, have you ever thought that televisions might be alive? Whoa! 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 Did you say alive? <laughs> what if televisions aren't just electronic boxes? What if they're actually living creatures and they can hear us and understand us? That's pretty wild, Jen. That's pretty wild, Laura. Now get a look at this. Rob, listen to me for a second. I'm listening, honey. We all have a purpose in life. I mean, I hope Feeling a lack of purpose in your life? TV has a purpose in life. Buy some along. It has to keep us looking at it. Stay tuned. Why do you think it always says stay tuned? Stay tuned. Did it just say stay tuned twice? Stay tuned. It's like we've invited a stranger into our house who watches us and studies us and listens into what we want. Do you want peace of mind? It's always distracting us. Welcome to Babes of Bermuda. You and I were supposed to go dancing, and now we're ordering Domino's pizza and you're watching Babes of Bermuda? Stock report in one minute. But you're never going to get the stock report. Doctors call it stress. Even though they're all stress lately. Some Try some some alone. Don't you get it, Rob? The TV is choosing things to keep us watching. Da 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 Honeymoon in Italia. That church? Didn't we see that on our honeymoon? Is this not familiar? Yes, I think it was in Rome. It's in Milan. In Milan. Just before we went to Florence. Now follow us to Florence. Oh my god! To the romantic the television is doing it! It showed the church in Milan just to distract us, and now it's showing, you know, the. The, the Ponte Vecchio. The Ponte Vecchio! Because we went there after Milan. Quite an insane idea. This is an insane idea, Laura. This is PBS about, I don't know, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci. And stay tuned. I think you need some help. Come to the land of the coconut. Maybe we need vacation. We'll go to Jamaica. Turn it off, Rob. No, don't do it. Turn it off. Turn it off. I think
You guys are thinking about hang gliding over here? Hang gliding home? Yeah, instead of driving, we're, we're taking that. Well, then you have to learn how to hang glide first? Well, sure, you're learning that, so you wrap the work. You could just drop your wings, walk up the top floor, sail home. Be the first person in history to fly from 32nd Street to 10th Avenue to 10th Avenue University. With a thousand view of the way. Maybe after I retire. You know, I've been sitting here eating this thing and I still don't know if it's tuna or liver worse. That's what you want to hear. The what? The carbon dioxide that compresses things in your nose when you can taste nothing. You said something, Joe. Not me. Must have been the carbon dioxide compressing my nose or something. Speaking of flying, Charlie, they got that movie about the limber kid on again tonight. They got the what? That show about the limber baby who got kidnapped with. Hey, what's up? What the hell are you doing? I don't want to see it. Did you see that movie that time it was on? Yeah. With Anthony Hopkins, uh, what's his name? We're not Hopman. Hey, did that happen someplace around? Oh, well, the Earth did. What did they bring that turkey back for? Turkey? Yeah, he wants to watch that garbage all over again. It's a very tough movie for your information, and as it happens today, the day of the New York Times Charlie movie was kidnapped. That happened 50 years ago. What's the big deal about it? You surprised that on Easter. They showed the King of Kings that weekend. Gentlemen. If you ever done anything more important than a little white cup, you shouldn't go for all of them. They showed the drum on story of your birthday. But that's going to be white cup today. Gentlemen, please. Don't be here to work for me. Hey, what's with you today, Charlie? What's the matter? Nothing matters. You're acting all weird. I'm all weird. So what's up? Turkey. I told you I don't want to hear words for you. Something sure seems up. Nothing so far. Yeah, right. Nothing so. Yes, and I think they are very beautiful. You made a goddamn fortune after you write about that kidnapping. 
happy to be a very dramatic thing. That doesn't mean she has to go peddling on the street corner. You ought to ask her for a cut of the royalties. You could retire early, take up penny lighting. Uncle, <laughs> uncle. Joe's got a good point, Charlie. You ought to contact your family. You could try to pick up your inheritance. You could have been a rich guy, Charlie. I wrote my money once. You did? Yeah, but millionaire never got there, and I feel the engineer is coming back. Did you tell her, you know, who you were? I hid who I was. Oh, sure. Dear mom, yes, sir. And he signed it. Your loving son, child of a Trojan, send the inheritance. Knock it off. Real subtle. Anyway, I told her I was from here, and that's how I put it, that I was from here. That's at the end? And I told her I was to go by the house all those times. Did you show the house you were kidnapped from? Yeah, I used to go by the hotel when I was a kid. So you're only to the Atlantic in the spirit of St. Louis? Yeah. And my grandfather was in Baxter, Mexico. I did they know that? Yeah, my mother and father. I've seen the movie lots of times on the late show. The spirit of St. Louis. Must be great having him to work with your father and mom. Ah, I wrote to Jimmy once. You ever answer back? I got a sign picture of him. You never told me you had a sign picture of Jimmy Stewart. Well, I've been keeping a secret in case people, you know, start making ideas of my identity. You know, it's very funny you should be saying all this. What can I mean that you were very good in your singing man? You see, I'm the son of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Did that got shot in Russia, Russia? It's the truth. He heard to the throne of Moscow. Holy shit! And sovereign of the Ukraine. But I thought you were shot. A fatal servant bombed me out. Nobody knows I survived. And you had some robbers on here in America, but Anthony Hopkins is one thing, but some robbers on here. I feel pretty honored having him in my movie, though I did have a few quibbles about the, you know, historical details. And so what's your name? Alexei Nikolai Beach Roman. The Tsar of Russia! No, Joe. The Tsar of Russia! What the great feelings? Do you know how old you'd have to be to be the Tsar of Russia? <laughs> you'd have to be 90 years old and a hemophilia. I've always been a heavy bleeder. That doesn't make you the Tsar of Russia. <laughs> 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 Think about that, you Shut up! <laughs> Hey, shut up. You're in the road of very sensitive ground here. We're talking about families in Frankie Ross and the Revolution. So how do you receive people that, though? Okay, Alexei. How do you know all of this? How do you know you're the head honcho of the Ukraine? Well, one day I saw a picture in a book, a picture of Moscow with the, you know, the Kremlin and those domes. Those onion shaped domes. And I said to myself, Before they didn't go around a corner, I know what was going to be on the other side. It was home. It was not painful. It was pretty painful. Seeing everything in close home. It only got really bad when I had to watch myself get killed. I forgot the most of it by now. The whole trauma probably made you, you know, repress it. Repress? Are you talking to this? No, she doesn't know. I'll probably talk to the her sometime. <laughs> Things should be happy with her. Yeah. She's a queen. Tsarina. The wife of the Tsar is the Tsarina. Is that a cool joke? Is that a cool? I think he says Tsarina. You got the fact that it's Eagle's fingers. I know how cars work. That doesn't make me an Oldsmobile. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got them, being all the sun. We never knew. If you didn't know about me, then you know about you. And you hear Joe, you didn't know you're one of us. in the previous 